Good afternoon and welcome to the State of the College Address for the Fall 2021 term. Um, it is such a pleasure to see each of you all once more virtually, uh, but I have seen many of you all face to face and look forward to seeing many more face to face as the semester continues. Let's talk a little bit about what we're doing at the college. We're going to start with a COVID-19 update. Obviously, that's front and center for the institution, and this is something that we need to continue uh, to monitor. We need to continue to track. I want to thank Dr. Peña, Melena Field, Hector Padilla, and Ivan Flores for the great work that they've done uh, as part of the COVID-19 team, uh, which I participate in as well. Uh, we're monitoring some key points of data, uh, and we did this for our phased return to campus. We look at the 14 days of decreasing cases, the rolling or seven-day moving average positivity rate, the cumulative positivity rate, uh, infection rate, and finally vaccination rates. So let's talk a little bit about where we are. Our employees, our essential employees have continued to be on campus throughout the pandemic. I want everyone to think about the police department, uh, about um, Mr. Lobato's staff. Um, There's several IT staff have, who have been here throughout. Uh, District-wide departments returned to campus beginning on June the 14th of this year. We started at 25% capacity with 100% of employee participation. Um, during the first two weeks of August, the administration monitored. We were supposed to, our plan, my plan was an initially to come back uh, on August the 2nd. Um, however, we had to delay that. We had a, uh, a number of cases that were increasing, and so we delayed that 50% return to campus with 100% participation from August 2nd to August 23rd. Um, our students, uh, essential student labs have remained open throughout uh, in the virtual learning period, and our CTE courses have been taught on campus since May of 2020. They only took the mandatory two-week uh, break uh, that, that our county judge um, required. So they've been on campus, they've continued to do that. The Board of Trustees approved a plan for a 50-50% mix of face-to-face -face classes and online classes for the fall. They approved that way back in the March and April timeframe. And so we have done that and we've moved forward. And I want to thank everyone for the great work that they have led in this particular area. Um, I want to thank uh, Aaron Flores and everyone else who has been involved in the, the Safe Campus Return website, which was launched in June of this year um, when we had our employees begin a phase return to campus. Kudos to the web development team. This has been an outstanding piece uh, where everyone can receive information on the Safe Campus Return. Here's the, the data that we monitor. So this is fresh data. This is the latest that's available. We had 81 cases that were reported today. Our cumulative positive rate was 9.19 percent. That number has continued to fall despite some upward trends. That number has continued to fall. The rolling seven-day average today stood at 2.22 percent. Uh, the infection rate, we're seeing about 87 cases per day, and this is actually good news. Um, it's nowhere near the 212 cases that we are, we, a community of our size can, can tolerate, if you will, but it is down from the 111 cases that we averaged this previous two weeks. So that is good news. And then our vaccination rates. We have almost 75% of our community aged 12 and over that is fully vaccinated. And an additional 80, just under 87% are partially vaccinated. So kudos to our community. Kudos to each and every one of you for doing the right thing and getting vaccinated. I know I'm waiting for my booster now. Um, I, I think that I'm due in either October or November for that. I know that several of you are looking at that as well. So kudos to our community for, um, from, from my vantage point, has had the most successful of any of the counties in the state of Texas. And so uh, this is a remarkable achievement. We'll continue to monitor this data uh, to determine what we do on whether we um, move forward with 75% um, capacity with 100% participating. We're not ready to look at that data yet. Uh, we'll keep the college community informed of that. Um, we also provided a COVID-19 vac vaccine clinic. And so what we saw in April of, 20, uh, of this year, we started with Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, as well as Moderna. To date, we've had 1,050 vaccines that have been administered um, to eligible populations, once again, that are 12 and older. 
It is currently open on Fridays um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at our Mission Del Paso campus. Uh, and I wanna thank all the volunteers from areas of the college who have helped with this, our pharmacy tech faculty, our medical assisting faculty and students, the EMSP faculty and students, our ITSC faculty, as well as our medical lab uh, technical faculty and students have done a tremendous job with this. Um, in addition, our, we provided an information workshop, and so I want to give kudos to our uh, faculty at, who, who led this particular initiative. Um, as you can see on the screen, we uh, are the dean in seven different health and CTE, as well as our math and science faculty. So kudos to Dr. Ajar and Dr. Rasai, uh, Dr. Castillo, uh, Ms. Montoya, Mr. Prado, Dr. Vasquez, and uh, Ms. Turk Francis for providing this, this workshop which were provided from June of last year to November. Uh, excellent information for our faculty and staff as well. Our Safe Campus Task Force and the vaccina Vaccination Planning Committee continues to do a great job. So the Safe Campus Task Force, it's 18 task, for mem task force members selected from departments throughout the district. Uh, Mr. Padilla is our emergency planner. He serves as co-chair. Mr. Flores, our safety specialist, is the other co-chair. In addition, we had 13 additional employees who served as liaisons, and that has been led by Dr. Pena, our Executive Director of Human Resources, um, have done a tremendous job. We've also had a COVID-19 vaccination planning team. Uh, and this is 25 different members uh, from throughout the college. That's led by Dr. Hajar, our Dean of CTE Math Science, uh, as well as our Dean of Healthcare and, and Technical Education and Campus Dean at the Rio Grande Campus. Can't thank this team enough for the great work that they've done. We will continue to monitor the data. We will ensure the safety, security of our faculty, staff, and students. That will always be at the forefront of what we do. So let's jump into what's going on at the college proper. I'm going to start with instruction and workforce education. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Smith, the deans, all of our faculty, as well as our support staff for the great work that they do. And so as we look forward, well, let's talk a little bit about the EPCC UTEP Bridges to the Baccalaureate Research Training Program. Uh, this, has been, uh, this has been available to our students since 1993. We were just renewed for a five-year grant from August of 2020 through July of 2025. We've had 342 college students who have participated. We have an 86% transfer rate to four-year universities, primarily UTEP. Um, and this has been a bellwether award finalist this past spring and so certainly appreciate the great work that has gone into this. Our STEM Grow program continues to do great work uh, and we continue to move this forward. Um, this one actually ends in this month, in September of 2021, um, but the impact of this grant is continuing to be, we've served approximately 4,500 students um, since, we do, since we began this particular grant. So kudos to all involved with this particular area. Um, our Contract Opportunity Center, uh, Mr. Adamandaris and his team have done a tremendous job as you can see, we had 161 businesses counseled, 797 counseling hours, 108 clients and businesses received awards. And you can see that we've received a total of 869 awards, which totaled over $168 million. 3,576 jobs were either created or retained. This is a tremendous effort, and so I want to thank everyone involved in this area. In addition, our Small Business Development, Corporate, Small Business Development Center with Mr. Ferguson and his staff, um, 893 training events were offered, over 4,000 attendees. Um, the Disaster Loan Relief received over almost $6.5 million, and small business clients 669 have been served. Again, tremendous effort and really uh, providing our part of, of our community involvement and in ensuring that our community comes out of this pandemic as well as we possibly can. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Texas Workforce Skills Development Funds. Uh, so we've continued, uh, Jeremy Jeske and, and Ray Vasquez have done a tremendous job with this. The Hospitals of Providence, we received grants for just under $700,000. We've trained 514 for just over 5,800 training hours. 
Uh, in addition, the Dish Network LLC received three hundred and fifty-eight thousand plus dollars. One hundred and seventy-four were trained, um, totaling sixteen hundred and seventy-one hours. Uh, and then we did also a COVID nineteen um, training with Technomarks, where it was just under two hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars. One hundred and seventy-eight were trained, uh, and f just under fifteen hundred training hours. I want to thank Ms. Campbell, Sabrina Campbell, for the apprenticeship training programs. You see each of those listed. We did one with uh, TWC in Chapter 133, just under $300,000, uh, 489 apprentices with s almost 77,000 training hours. We received an American Association of Community Colleges expansion grant for $140,000. That served 300 apprentices. That exceeded, that more than doubled our goal of 150. dollars And then finally, a, a TWC expansion grant of $200,000 that serves another 100 apprentices. Kudos and great job on that. Let's talk a little bit about high school enrollment. Let's track this. Um, this is Dean Badillo and the entire dual credit early college high school team who continue to do a tremendous job. We started dual credit back in the fall of 2001. It was 93 total students and we had about 18,000 500 students. It accounted for less than half of 1% of total enrollment. By 2006, we uh, had about 7.8% of our enrollment was dual credit in early college high schools. And by this fall of 2020, we were looking at about 36% of our enrollment was dual credit in early college high schools. Um, the fall of 2020, it actually, 2021 rather, it tempered down back to 33.8%. Um, and so kudos for the great job of ensuring that our high school students have access uh, and that they're qualified to take dual credit in early college high school programs. Um, kudos to you. 15 years of early college high school partnerships. We started way back in 2006 with the Mission Del Paso Early College High School. And we now, as of this fall, have 27 early college high schools. Uh, and the, the best part of this, again, I've expressed this and I continue to see that there's parts of the state that have more early college high schools. There's not a part of the state that have more successful early college high schools. 71% of our participants in these 27 early college high schools receive their associate's degrees before they graduate from high school. So kudos to Dean Badillo and the entire team for the support for all of the work that goes into this. And our, our partners, our district partners, have obviously understood this as well. And so we're in the planning year for an additional seven early college high schools. You see five of them with, with El Paso ISD. Uh, we're doing one with Harmony. There was legislation passed that uh, we are able to partner with uh, with uh, different partners such as Harmony. Uh, and then finally, you see the, the additional one um, on engineering biology as well. Um, another program, we've talked about uh, our new facilities and we've talked about one of the new programs that we were going to start, which is echocardiography and cardiac sonography. That program actually already began. And so kudos to our program coordinator, Ernesto Castro, as well as all of our staff and faculty in that particular area. It started this summer with a cohort of 10 students. Those 10 students are currently at different hospitals and clinics receiving their clinicals. And the echo lab and classroom will be housed in the the new J parking garage and health building at the Rio Grande campus. We anticipate that that facility be, will be ready for the spring term. And I know that they're excited and ready to jump into that particular building. Let's talk a little bit about the great work that uh, our curriculum highlights uh, for 2021. For 2021, uh, Dr. Smith, our deans and faculty, we now have 154 total programs. We offer 19 Associate of Arts, 13 Associate of Science, 52 Associate of Applied Science degrees. We have 70 certificates of completion. We started two new programs, uh, again, both in echocardiography, both in AAS, as well as the CT4. And we have 11 fields of study. So we continue to provide programs for our, fa for our community so that they understand and they have the ability to enroll in these particular programs. So kudos to our instructional leadership team. 
The catalog and registration guide, um, again, the new catalog is out. Uh, it's on the website. It has been. And we also have a new registration guide that's available for our students as well online. In this virtual environment, we wanted to make sure that they had access to it online. And so kudos to the team for moving that forward. Our counselors, uh, counseling at every single campus has been provided. Um, the overall student contacts for the spring and summer of 2021 has been just short of 88,000 contacts. So they were emailing, they were virtual contacts, phone contacts, and since we began uh, on the 24th of June, we started our face-to-face -face contacts as well. And we'll continue to see that number rise. So kudos to our team for moving forward. Laura Lee Ambris and her team have done a great job of continuing the Northwest Community Library, of ensuring that it is a community. Um, this was hosted uh, with, our, with Microsoft Teams. We had 299 children register. Um, and the data shows that they were taking multiple classes. We had 1,402, which was a 13% increase, um, and an additional 33% on the duplicated data compared to 2020. They had 34 classes, uh, online classes, including one Lego contest, uh, and classes increased from 28 to 34. Uh, our staff prepared over 1,200 supply bags per, ch uh, per child per class that were made available to the parents via curbside when the program ended. So kudos to you all for continuing to ensure that our community is involved with us. Um, our census drive through events. We had two census drive through events which were held at the EPCC Northwest Campus. One was on September 9th, 2020. Um, the marketing department, our census public uh, relations office did a great job. We had Telemundo, Univision, CBS, ABC7, and Fox 14 that all covered this, as well as the uh, Diario del El Paso, all covered the event. So kudos for ensuring that our people are counted this is so important. We all know that in particular as the legislature continues to move forward uh, with redistricting. Our fire tech program has done a tremendous job. You know, we, uh, they have partnered with our libraries to promote fire safety. Um, I want to give kudos to faculty uh, Julius, uh, Julius Gutierrez and Richard Baema, uh, as well as Laura Lee Ambris, Norma Ballinger, and Oscar Baeza. Um, there was 482 uh, carbon monoxide smoke detector units and, and information that was distributed, 200 at the Northwest Campus, 147 at the Mission del Paso Campus, and 135 at the Valle Verde Campus. So kudos, obviously State Farm, who's been a wonderful partner in this, but kudos to each of you you for continuing to move this forward. Um, our 2021 Dr. Seuss Week, we had almost 500 pre-K through third grade students who participated virtually during the week of March 2nd through the 6th. You see the, all the different participants um, from Davenport Elementary with 135, Canatillo Elementary, all the way through uh, Jose Damien Elementary, but an outstanding job of ensuring that our students continue with Dr. Seuss Week. I want to give a lot of credit to Ms. Rodriguez, Lucia Rodriguez, for the great work that her and her team do uh, with the PASOS program. This is a, a excellent program. Uh, a what they did is they had a conversation with, with the legendary Dolores Huerta as our final guest. You see all the different areas that they covered, which was outstanding. Uh, in addition, Connecting the Dots, this is the fourth annual conference for EPCC academic tutors, our support staff, and our faculty partners to really allow students to understand how to connect the dots and have our staff be able to connect the dots for our students to ensure that this is a seamless process of being able to allow our students to utilize all of the services that we have, which are primarily virtual at this point. And so wonderful job in moving that forward. Uh, uh, continuing with Ms. Rodriguez's in our Office of Student Success, um, the, they are offering uninterrupted services for EPCC students 20 hours a day of tutoring for our students seven days a week. In the spring of 2021, we had just short of 6,000 tutoring sessions. 100% of our students say they will return. And so this was an outstanding job of being able, again, to transition and continuing this transition process uh, for our students and making sure that we're available for them. 
our faculty and student engagement. Um, the new student engagement survey for outreach campaign, it began in, in the spring of 2021. We continued it through the summer and it'll be an ongoing process during this academic year of 2021-22. Um, when asked, can we assist um, 1,672 students responded yes to our outreach and contact. When asked, is there something that EPCC's gone the extra mile to help you with? 654 students said yes. So I want to thank everyone for their involvement. Kudos to you for being responsive to our students. Cybersecurity in summer, our, our summer camp for 2021. This is outstanding. Our cybersecurity camp for our JROTC cadets from EPISD. 40 cadets participate in classes uh, from 9 a.m. to noon. And you can see that these classes were taught by Mr. Vargas and uh, Nadia Karkovic. Eduardo Alecon and Isaac Gonzalez, great job in making sure that our, our school district uh, is available and that we continue to provide wonderful opportunities for them. Our college recruiting efforts, they've continued. And so I want to provide kudos to our team for participating in the Cool Canyon Nights, uh, the free concerts that were offered from May to September. Our faculty and staff worked from 4.30 to 9 p.m. providing information about our programs, financial aid, how to register, and all the online access that's available to students through uh, the college website, uh, through iPads, as well as a hotspot. So kudos to the team for doing a great job with this. Um, another, another Texas Workforce Commission grant that we want to provide uh, a, a, an insight into. Uh, we received a grant for $172,000 to build competency-based education courses to support the mapping of military training. We've had 21 faculty who are participating in 12 teams. Uh, they're building 12 different courses to be offered in a CBE competency-based education format. The first courses are scheduled to go live in the second mini-mester of this fall, and then we'll have 12 going live uh, in the spring of 2022. So kudos to everyone's involvement in that. The Avancid Partnership uh, continues to move forward. This is beginning in May of 2021. We reestablished a partnership with Avance that will provide various types of support to parents who are students at EPCC. I want to thank our faculty, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Rosalia Galindo, Ms. Isela Castanon williams as well as Dr. Krista Salas for making sure that we brought this program back for our students. Phi Theta Kappa, this is an outstanding job, our Omega Gamma chapter. Um, we had orientations that were held in Fridays. They, they began on February 26th, and we had them again on June the 11th. Um, as a result of the pandemic, virtual events have taken place, and we doubled the memberships from last year. We went from 66 to 132. So kudos to everyone for involvement and being able to show our students, uh, our brightest students, students who have achieved the highest GPAs, that there is an opportunity for them uh, with Phi Theta Kappa. And so certainly I'm pleased and excited that we've had 132 students that have now become members. The National Endowment for the Humanities uh, want to provide kudos. This is a one-year planning grant of $35,000. Want to provide, again, kudos to Margie Nelson Rodriguez, uh, to Professor Fan Chen, as well as to Dr. Escamilla for moving this forward. The planning committee formed uh, of faculty from a wide uh, array of disciplines, as well as a librarian. They began in the summer of 2021, and the purpose of the grant is called HUMSTEM, that will connect the humanities and STEM curriculum uh, for experiential learning opportunities. So kudos for, to each of you all. EPCC School Store, this is incredibly important. Um, so the academic year in partnership with EPCC and El Paso Community Foundation, we were able to provide 1,350 backpacks that were delivered. 19 elementary and middle schools across nine school districts received these backpacks. Nine of the schools are EPCC adopted schools, so kudos for moving that forward. And I wanna thank uh, Ms. Shannon Bias, uh, the serving le service learning program, uh, as well as the administration, marketing students, faculty and staff for making this possible. So great job of getting these backpacks to our students in our community. Let's talk a little bit about student and enrollment services. First, we want to welcome Dr. Carlos Amaya. Uh, Dr. Amaya has been appointed our Interim Vice President for Student Enrollment Services. Um, he will do a great job effective the 1st of August. He was appointed 
Uh, Dr. Maya has spent the last, uh, has been at the college for over 13 years. He was a campus dean at the Valle Verde campus and most recently served as interim associate vice president for workforce and continuing education. I want to personally thank Dr. Amaya and welcome him to this role. I continue to look forward to working with him and his division as we continue to move forward with enrollment and student services. The Center for Students with Disabilities, Ms. Lopez and her team, um, they have, uh, EVAC chairs have been placed district-wide uh, at the stairways in multiple level buildings. Um, we've had 32 workshops and trainings for tutors and seven for centers with uh, students with disabilities um, in understanding how to utilize these particular areas. So kudos to each of you for, for moving this forward. Um, certainly appreciate it. Uh, continuing with our Center for Students with Disabilities, uh, we continue to move forward uh, at the Valle Verde office. Uh, we have extended the project higher assistive technology to include five additional computer stations at the Mission Del Paso campus has moved to a new location and the Trans Mountain office uh, has added an additional assistive technology lab and tutoring area. So certainly appreciate all the good work that's happening district-wide to make sure that all of our students are served. Continuing with that, our CSD counselors provide intake services and advisement and registration. Uh, I want to thank um, Gerard Bettis at the Northwest Campus Coordinator. He taught two children sign language interpreting courses for the Northwest Campus Library. Those took place from June 14th through July 2nd. We had 75 students who were, in, who were involved in that. Uh, a transition specialist was hired and will be working uh, with the El Paso High School to ensure that students with disabilities are informed about what the college has to offer them as they graduate from high school. We need all students to take advantage of this. Our new student orientation, Mr. Guerrero and his team have done a wonderful job as well. Um, they continued to host a virtual office and they've had 26 of the 35 virtual orientation sessions, which have capacity of 80 to 100 students. Um, they'll continue until the last Friday, which took place just uh, this past August. Um, they've continued to move forward in uh, serving students as enrollment guides for the registration office and just want to thank them. In addition, they worked with EPCC TV to create how-to videos to showcase Blackboard, Degree Works, how to enroll, and financial aid. And all of these videos can be found on our official NSO YouTube channel. So kudos to everyone who's been involved. Uh, our recruitment services, this is going to continue to play an, a more and more important role. Uh, and I know Dr. Graham says we all are recruiters, and that's true. Uh, but these folks in particular are uh, designated as recruiters. They conducted Apply Texas virtual sessions at the high schools. They participated in the virtual TACRA week, continuing to provide students. They participated in Co Operation College Bound contacted over 5,000 high school graduates with registration and ARPA grant information to make sure that our students have access to those resources. So kudos. Recruitment will continue to play a larger and larger role as we continue to move forward in trying to build back enrollment um, post-pandemic. So this will play uh, additional role as we move forward. I want to thank Arvis Jones and her team, our, our student leadership in campus life. Um, they, they uh, received, uh, the Tejano Food Pantry received a $5,000 check from Albertson's Companies Foundation to continue to offer um, our, in our efforts to, to combat food insecurity. So I want to thank them. In addition, they received uh, $1,500 from Mano y Corazon. Uh, in addition, we've moved forward a student leadership at Campus Live with Creative Kid Kitty Corner, where we had over 600 views. Um, the EPCC Remembers virtual event had over 1,600 views. And so I want to thank you for the great work that continues to move forward in this area. Um, continuing with student leadership in Campus Life, they, they held an Indigenous uh, People Celebration, which was held October uh, of last year. We had 11, over 1,100 participants. Tejanos Against Hunger and Homelessness, that was held in November of last year. And we had uh, November 9th through the 13th, as well as the 16th through the 18th. And finally, we had the Jazz at Sunset, which was held in February, where we had a th over 1,000 participants. So kudos for ensuring that we continue to keep our students engaged, as well as our larger community. 
Carlos Gonzalez and his staff at Testing Services, um, they transitioned uh, to a virtual office. Uh, they were able to partner with online proctoring services, which provided remote proctoring 24-7 uh, from September 2020 through July of 2021. The testing services department had administered just under 8,000 exams. And EPCC's GED is placed in the top 10 centers by the number of exams taken. So kudos again for ensuring that students have access to these particular resources that they need vitally. Our police department, uh, this is another area that, just, uh, that has continued to work on campus throughout. Uh, they, that you can't police virtually, and so I want to provide kudos to Chief Ramirez and his officers. Uh, the department has continued to provide virtual active shooter trainings. 99% uh, of departments, uh, the department is patrol rifle certified. The bike unit continues to uh, certify department officers. Um, the police department assisted with COVID-19 testing um, at, at the Valle Verde campus, and they've continued to provide um, support as well at the Mission campus for our vaccination site. So kudos, Chief Ramirez, to you and your team for the great work that you've continued to do. The calling campaign. Uh, I want to thank Student Services, and I want to thank Angelica Sano from our office uh, and the entire calling campaign team. Um, there has been just under 74,000 calls that have been made just since the summer of 2020. You see the number of callers and you see the number of individuals that they have reached out to. So kudos, this made a significant difference in not only enrollment, but utilizing um, all of the resources, the HERF resources that we have received from the federal government. So kudos and thank you Angelica and the entire team for the great work that you've done on this. Let's talk about research accreditation and planning. I wanna thank Dr. Penley and her entire team and the preparation of where we're headed. So this time next year, we will have a SAC COC um, reaffirmation and accreditation team, hopefully on campus. We shall see, they've been operating virtually, uh, but the compliance certification is due on the 1st of March. And accreditation is each and every one of you. We're all involved in accreditation. And so we want to ensure a successful reaccreditation process. Uh, the Board of Trustees address uh, our reaffirmation accreditation we anticipate in June of 2023. Uh, the team again will be here September 12th through the 15th uh, when we anticipate an on site committee will be uh, here at El Paso Community College. I want to thank Dr. Penley, Mary Beth Hahn, and the entire team for ensuring and for playing point but it's everyone's responsibility and certainly appreciate uh, everyone's, uh, everyone's contributions to this. Institutional effectiveness. Dr. Penley has led this. Uh, this is our TASB policy conversion. Uh, every month, those of you that, that uh, tune in to the board meetings, you've noticed that the board has been taking on and Dr. Penley has been presenting to them policies that will be located uh, on the college's TASB portal. Uh, the procedures will remain on our IE webpage and we'll, they'll continue to be reviewed and revised in the same way that we'll continue to provide college-wide input. But here's a sample, uh, an example of the numbering rather, uh, that we've utilized for this. This has been a significant undertaking. I want to thank Dr. Penley for leading this particular effort. Ms. Frescas and her team, um, the anthology, this is EPCC's new area planning software. Um, and we're moving forward with this. And so I want to thank you all for all of the con contributions. If you have not received a hard copy of the strategic plan, we encourage you to contact Ms. Frescas. Uh, and want to thank everyone who's trained on this and continuing to move this forward. Dr. K. and Angeles Vasquez, uh, institutional research continues to provide um, virtual data forums. Here's an example uh, from module one, which was Power BI navigation, all the way through module eight, which was research and de design. Um, Want to thank them for providing uh, these particular modules to ensure that our faculty and staff have the ability to utilize uh, the virtual data forum. 
In addition, um, our expanding research ca uh, ca capabilities. So we have improved data collection. The My SIO tracks, or MISO tracks, uh, provide that interaction with the institution and link student experience to performance outcomes. And then improved data analysis, uh, the use of Sevitas analytics to explore the effectiveness of the college uh, success initiatives that we have had. So some examples are tutoring services, midterm grades, all the way through early alert. So I want to thank the team for the great job that they've done there. Our no Lovett survey results. I want to highlight that 86%, so the question, here's an example of the question, question from the survey, question three. So far, how has your college experience, has your college experience met your expectation? 86% of our males have said it has been what they expected or better than what they expected. And 88% of our female students have felt that it's been what they expected or better than they expected. This is a, a testament to each and every one of you who has worked hard to make sure that we've continued to provide our community with the best uh, learning environment possible. Our quality enhancement plan, Dr. Quiroz and her team um, this is our new QEP, which will launch next fall. Uh, the slogan is find your way, connect, discover, and succeed. So we want to make sure that by this time next year, everyone will remember the QEP slogan, find your way, connect, discover, succeed. Uh, this, the goal is to improve student success through increased communication and ongoing career exploration towards student ownership of the degree plan process. And I encourage each of you to stay tuned for information about the QEP poster contest. But again, I want to thank Dr. Quiroz and her team for the, for the great work that they've done in moving this forward. Student learning outcomes, so keeping math in mind. I know that mathematics seems to be a course that we have some students uh, stumble upon. Uh, we wanna make sure that every student completes the general education and core curriculum at EPCC, that they'll be able to complete arithmetic computations uh, unaided and be able to set up higher level equations. So wanna thank Rebecca Bell for the great work that they've done on that particular project, as well as our assessment cycle, which is starting again. The SLO and general education core assessment cycles, there are two assessments that are now aligned, and it's a three-year cycle that began in August of this year and will conclude in July uh, of 2024. So I wanna thank you so much for the great work that's done there. Moving on to financial and administrative services, uh, Vice President Shaughnessy and her team, let's start with the budget. So this is our adopted budget. Uh, it's just short of $150 million. You can see the breakup of this. Um, the largest part of our budget is now property taxes at just short of 44%, uh, just about $65.5 million. Um, and I want to remind everyone that we're the smallest portion of anyone's tax bill. We're about 4.5%. Um, in addition, our tuition and fees is about 25% of the budget, a little over $37.5 million. State appropriations, which did fall, and I'll touch on that shortly, it's now $31.6 million, or 21%. And then you see the rest of the budget. Um, in addition, we have revenue recovery of nine point just short of nine point eight from from HERF resources, $9.8 million. So how do we spend those resources? Uh, you can see how we spend those particular resources. Instruction is the largest portion at 48.5. That's direct instruction, 32.38%. In addition, a significant portion of academic support is part of instruction as well at 15, just short of $16 million. You see student services at 8.8 .8 million. Institutional support, which is also part of uh, a segment of that as part of instruction as well at 50 million. And you see the rest of the respective budget and how we expend those particular resources. Um, again, if you look at them specifically um, based on categories, our staff salaries are, are at um, $42.1 million. Uh, and you see the staff detail. We have our full-time staff as well as our part-time. Uh, in addition, you see our faculty salaries at just short of $50 million. And you see our full-time faculty as well as our uh, adjunct or part-time faculty. You see all of the different other areas uh, from supplies and services, uh, benefits, uh, a contingency as well. And then you see travel, uh, which we've slowly begun 
begin to put travel back into the budget, it is less than half of 1%. It's about $680,000. So the adoption of our operating budget. So um, the budget, we've continued to have challenges with, with budget. You know, the, the budget is uh, with decreases in, oper in appropriations and declining enrollment that we experienced in 2021. Obviously, the pandemic played a huge role with that. Um, the final budget of $149.8 million was adopted by the board in August of this year. Uh, it includes a 2% across the board salary enhancement, as well as a one-time incentive pay for all eligible employees. Uh, the board approved a one-time $1,500 payment for full-time staff, a one-time $1,000 payment for part-time staff, in addition to the 2% salary enhancement. So I want to thank the board uh, for the great job that they've done on that. In addition, our tax rate actually fell. Um, so housing uh, prices went up this year. I'm sure that some of you experienced it. I experienced a significant increase in my, uh, in, in my uh, housing uh, value, if you will. And so our property tax actually fell from 13.98 cents to 13.4. Uh, and so again, I would remind our friends and neighbors that the college has the lowest tax of, uh, it's about four and a half percent of anyone's tax bill. HRD, Mr. Hernandez and his team have done a tremendous job. They had their 28th annual staff development retreat, which was held virtually in April of this year. They presented the program Gifts from the Mountain by Eileen McDar uh, and had excellent reviews from the 47 participants. 40, uh, so kudos. In addition, HRD continues to move forward. Uh, they've con coordinated uh, and virtually presented 16 different training programs in 25 workshops to 347 employees. Uh, and that has actually increased the demand for our virtual training. You see all the different programs that were introduced. I want to thank Mr. Hernandez and his team for doing a great job with that. Our ISC shipping and, recover, and receiving and property management control, they delivered via curbside equipment, mail packages, boxes, copies, and paper to our faculty, staff, students, and the community. I received the board packets at my home. I want to thank you all for doing that. Um, great job of doing that. And they've operated with flexible hours of operation to make sure that they serve the needs of our faculty, staff, and students. In addition, they have distributed PPE supplies and equipment to our faculty and staff throughout 2021. Uh, you see all of the different equipment that we ordered that became just paramount that we have those available to our faculty, staff, and, and we do provide some to our students as well, but kudos for, for doing that great work. Our coordination of our efforts by human, uh, by human resources. I want to thank Dr. Pena and Melena Field, who've continued to do a great job of this. They've continued to monitor and report on our El Paso area's daily and delayed, uh, daily new and delayed cases. You see all the different metrics that we monitor daily. I usually meet with the COVID-19 team uh, every week or every other week uh, to make sure that we're continuing to stay on solid ground. We even partnered with UTEP twice uh, early this year to provide vaccine eligible before we became our own vaccination site. We were able to partner with them to provide um, some of our faculty and staff eligibility in, in a two-day period in July and February of this year. Um, our virtual accomplishments um, by HR. Again, Dr. Pena and his team have done a great job with this. Uh, they contracted faculty and staff for the 2021 year, plan to do a, the same thing for the 21-22 year. Uh, we reviewed, they have reviewed incoming TASB legal and local policies applicable to human resources, and they'll continue to do that work. And so I want to thank them all for this great job. Uh, our, that was our electronic employee contracts that they worked with IT and our ERP team to make sure that they were available to our faculty and staff. Um, our physical plant projects, Mr. Lobato and his team have been busy, in particular before we had uh, faculty and staff on our campuses, they were able to get a significant number of projects done. Here's just an example. Here at the ASC, the marquee signage was installed. 
The rooftop unit was replaced uh, on the A building. The electrical transformer and underground power wire replacement. Uh, the inter intersection traffic signage renovation were also replaced. Just did a tremendous job with that. A at the Mission Del Paso campus, again, the, the marquee signage was installed. Stair renovation was completed. Um, that was in, it was completed just recently. The painting of the hallways, offices, and classrooms, all to get ready for our students coming back. The Northwest Campus, the marquee signage, we're very proud of our marquee signage that has been installed throughout the district. Again, painting of hallways, offices, and classrooms, installing new classroom furniture uh, replacement is on order. So really want to thank Mr. Lobato and his team for the great work at the Rio Grande campus. Similarly, the fire alarm was replaced. Uh, the pharmacy tech was ex uh, was expanded. Uh, the floor replacement in A250. And again, the marquee signage was installed. And finally, at the Trans Mountain campus, uh, the marquee signage installation has been done. They were able to repair the electrical transformer replacement and loop repair, classroom furniture replacement was ordered uh, and then again the painting of hallways and classrooms to make sure that our campus looks the best possible and finally the the projects of the Valle Verde campus uh, the hallway floor replacement um, was done marquee signage installation and these are throughout the, uh, the campus um, students with disability carpet replacement and the gymnasium equipment storage facility was completed um, so kudos, Mr. Lobato, and your team for the great work that you all have done. Uh, Lee Vasquez and the team are diversity and inclusion programs. You see the wide variety of diversity and inclusion uh, that offered several virtual events throughout the last year for our, for our faculty, staff, and students. And so kudos uh, for continuing to move these forward. Dr. Brown and the Leadership Academy team have done a tremendous job. Congratulations to the class of 2021. The theme was challenging and crucial conversations. Boy, that has been true for the last 18 months. Uh, they met virtually as well as in person, and they had you see the variety of guests that they had. So I want to thank Dr. Brown and the entire committee for doing a great job and ensuring that the Leadership Academy continue to move forward. IT, let's talk about Dr. Iron and her team and the great work that they've done. Our network system and support services, they upgraded district-wide firewall equipment that included new hardware and software for increased security protection. In addition, uh, they finalized installation of network equipment with the installation of 111 PCs at the new Mission Del, Campo, Del, uh, Del Paso campus, pardon me, facility. Uh, the Technology Resource Center provided over 178 technology training workshops and over 100 different topics and tw over 2,200 attendees. So kudos to Mr. Fernandez and his team for continuing to move that forward. In addition, we've had some improved system enhancements. Um, over 1,300 service requests were processed and completed by um, TSS. Uh, they have assisted in the computer imaging uh, for over 1,900 PCs at the district-wide ASC, AC, ACS labs. In addition, they imaged uh, and set up the, uh, the Makerspace lab with 17 lab laptops and 11 3D printers. So they have absolutely been busy as well. Our website analytics, I want to thank Mr. Flores and his team, Aaron Flores and his team for the great work. Um, you see some of the data. Uh, our programs of study webpage has received 192,000 visits since the 1st of January through August 13th. Um, the admission website has received 187,000 visits. Uh, online assistants and virtual offices have had 167,000 clicks to connect. And finally, the website related to IT work has been just short of 500 that have been completed. So kudos for the great work on that. Um, again, our network system projects, you can see um, that 60% of our projects have been completed. You see that the Exchange hybrid environment is complete. Uh, the, the migrate employee emails to Exchange Online is complete, and the Exchange Online archiving is complete. They're continuing in progress the backup solution as well as the Rio Grande Education Management Solutions is continuing to move forward. The Tutor Finder, 
It was designed by my EPCC and was updated to accommodate face-to-face -face as well as online tutoring. So kudos for moving that f forward. Uh, network systems and support, um, alternative credit options and college credit for heroes pages have been added uh, in the admissions website. These are important pieces that we need to continue to make sure that, that students have access to these respective areas. And so kudos for getting those new web pages up. Um, I want to thank Abraham Hubal and his team for the uh, for the mobile friendly application where students can apply for for the uh, funds that were provided by the uh, ARPA Act of 2021 that was created an email was sent to students confirming their application so it's a fully automated process so kudos for moving that up uh, and moving so quickly on that our IT software applications and analytics um, they have moved forward with developing the online training um, repository documents, staff online training for the mandatory EEOs and sexual harassment training. Uh, the MySIO is integrated with the new repository, therefore electronic si uh, signings are interfaced into the repository. So kudos for moving this forward. Uh, continuing with our software applications and analytics, um, the Banner, Banner Oracle upgrade, the DBA team upgraded Banner Oracle databases from 18.3 to 19.3, and the Lucian Banner upgrade, the DBA team upgraded to the latest Lucian Banner releases. So I want to thank them for the great work that they have continued to do throughout um, the online and now that we're back to face-to-face -to -face, uh, uh, classes as well. Um, the program update upgrades, Sevitas College, College Scheduler upgrade, that was done. Um, our Power BI has also been upgraded and continues to move forward. I utilize the Power BI daily to look at data throughout the district, so I want to thank you for that. And then assistance with the calling campaign. They provided uh, the financial aid and student departments with numerous reports and data loads to help identify students for calling campaigns. This was crucial throughout the enrollment process and will continue to be. So I want to thank you for the great work on that. Our academic computing and media services, they continue to do great work. Uh, they continue with assisting with the distribution of hundreds of laptops and hotspots as well as webcams for our students, faculty, and staff. Um, Media Services and EPCC TV have been coordinating the virtual and face-to-face -face facility and finance meetings, regular and special board meetings throughout the pandemic, and want to thank you for that. Uh, Media Services ran a hybrid classroom pilot project, which was outstanding. And finally, the ASC has uh, an active marketing campaign informing students of the ACS mobile device checkout program. So kudos to each of you for making sure that our faculty, staff, and students could continue to operate throughout the pandemic and are continuing to move forward throughout the pandemic. Media services, they live stream the spring semester virtual commencement ceremony on YouTube with thousands of viewers, produce several television commercials promoting the new EPCC facilities and encouraging students to register. So cannot thank you enough for the great work that has been done with these particular areas. Continuing with media services, um, they continued the virtual TV shows Entre Nosotras and Creative Thinkers, hosted by our faculty member, Dr. Silvia Peregrino and Miguel Valenzuela. Uh, they recorded audio pieces for podcasts and video segments for instructors to post on Blackboard. They've collaborated with enrollment services to produce short videos for student registration processes, and they work with the Leadership Academy to train faculty and staff on the production of promotional videos. Let's turn to external relations, communication, and development. Uh, Associate Vice President Mo and her team, what have they been up to? Well, the marketing campaign, uh, Pound Worth It, uh, they have highlighted uh, the benefits of a college degree. EPCC is worth it. It's affordable. It's flexible. The investment that pays off. I want to thank Mr. Heine and the PR and marketing team for continuing to move forward, continuing to ensure that our community understands the value of higher education, specifically at El Paso Community College. In addition, they've been highlighting student voices. Students are the absolute best voice to let other students, and so they've gone forward with student testimonials. Uh, and those have been highlighted in our marketing campaign. You see one of them here um, with a young lady who says that she invested in herself, and that is key for our students to understand that um, the, how important that is. 
Um, I want to thank Ms. our graphic designers, Luis Flores, Monica Tarin, uh, as well as Viri Villa de Ho del Hoyo, for the great work that they've done um, throughout the pandemic. You see some samples of the great work that they've done. You know, a college degree is worth it. You also have the, uh, the social distancing. Uh, we had the mask mandate when that was applicable, as well as our summer, summer and fall registration with Tejano Jack. So kudos to each of you for the great work that you've done um, our marketing keeps the college visible and so you see our social media followers con followers continue to increase you see that we've gained five percent uh, on twitter users we've gained a uh, 13 percent share in facebook and we've gained 17 percent on instagram so kudos for ensuring that we shifted our marketing to make sure that we're available uh, to students at all times Public relations uh, efforts are resulting in earned media coverage. You can see that more than 900 mentions on radio, newspaper, and television, television were averaging about 17 mentions per week. So kudos for the great work. I want to thank uh, Mr. Elliott and his team in grants management. We've had $113 million of funding for EPCC grants that were awarded in 2021. Um, new awards and renewals are 64, and we have 71 grants that are being administered. This is a huge part of what we do, and so thank you, Mr. Elliott, and your team for the great work that you do. Um, if you look at the impact on the college and community, you see that the payroll impact is over $4.2 million. Um, supplies is just short of 60,000, um, just short of $300,000 in equipment, um, over $500,000 in professional service. Uh, and then you see facilities administration is just short of $400,000. And the direct to students has been $42.2 million. So kudos for the great work on that. Our foundation continues to do exceptional work, uh, 205000 over $205,000, 148 scholarships, 166 emergency grants for pandemic support, and 72% of the scholarship re recipients have demonstrated financial need. You see a couple of students there that express their, their appreciation for this great work. The foundation has continued. We received $75,000 um, from the hospitals of Providence. Um, it, we're in year four of a five-year commitment. Uh, $40,000 from McDonald's. I want to thank Mr. Castro, obviously, and his work with that. Uh, $10,000 from GECU and general student scholarships. Uh, $5,000 from BBVA Compass uh, for electrical technology equipment. $5,000 from the Camino Real Rotary Club. Uh, and then eight scholarships for our $4,000 from IEM at Becas and the 2020. I uh, want to thank them for the great work that they continue to do. Um, our foundation partners have done a great job. We have the Hunt Foundation, we have Marathon, you see West Star Bank, the El Paso Electric, Hospitals of Providence, you see all of these different stars, et cetera, all of these different partners who have continued to do great work and continue to contribute to the college uh, so that we can make sure that we uh, continue to provide scholarships to our students. Uh, the foundation matching funds for student success, the Star Scholarship, um, we have an eight-year partnership with the college. It's to date, $50,000. Again, I mentioned the IMA Becas for 2021-22. This is a two-year partnership with the Mexican Consulate, and it's for students of Mexican origin. They provided $6,000 for that. The Stay Strong Emergency Funds, uh, just short of $72,000 has been raised to date for emergency grants um, received from community donors, businesses, foundations, and EPCC employees as well. And you see another testimonial from uh, Daniela Hernandez, a psychology student who talks about the impact that this has made on her in particular. Um, we've received $5,000 from the Albertsons Foundation for the food pantry, another $3,000 from the El Paso Architectural Foundation for architecture student scholarships. Uh, so certainly want to thank all of the members involved, and we have another student testimonial that you see on your screen. Um, our support for students has continued to move forward. We've had $125,000 in emergency funding from Equity to help students impacted by the COVID pandemic over the 2021 and 21-22 year. 
Um, and so we partnered with Equity and we were able to receive this resources from the Brown Foundation. Certainly want to thank uh, our employees as well. We've had 105 college administrators, faculty and staff who've donated over $30,000 to help support our students. I want to thank the El Paso Community College Foundation team for all the work that they have done. Dr. Dolores Gross, the Executive Director, Perla Renteria, Sandy Mejia, Diana Valenzuela, America Melendez Hernandez, and Jennifer Morales. Thank you for the great job that you continue to do and for all the initiatives to help make students successful. Let's talk about some state and federal updates. There's some significant state and federal updates. Um, First, the 87th legislature, the regular session has ended. We've had two special, we're about to start a third special session, but the, the regular session did determine the budget. And so I wanna share with you uh, the funding for community colleges. As you can see, the 2021 funding was at $1.839 billion. You see the breakdown between core operations, contact hours, the Bachelor of Applied Technology, student success points, um, as well as some a need-based supplement that was provided to 11 colleges. Um, we ended up with $1.844 billion. That was an increase of $5.2 million. Uh, contact hours actually were reduced by $86.5 million, but we see that um, student success points was increased by 86 and a half million. So let's talk a little bit about where we ended up, um, where El Paso Community College did. So core operations remained uh, at 1.36 million. Our contact hours were funded at just short of $50 million, and then student success points were funded at just, just short of $12 million. So total funding for the college was just about $63.1 million. This was a $1.1 million cut um, from last session. So we saw about an 11.2% decline in contact hours, uh, about a 9.5% decline in enrollment, but 11 a little over 11% in contact hours. Um, the legislature chose to flat fund community colleges which meant the sector as a whole was funded at the same level but it based on where you were compared to the average and so as a result we lost about 1.1 million had we looked at contact hours and our loss in contact hours from the previous year, we would have lost $7.2 million. So not that I'm happy about a $1.1 million cut, but it's certainly better than the $7.2 million that we would have seen had we been funded literally on contact hour um, generation. Um, if we look at the community college funding, formula funding was SB1. You see the conference committee uh, in the Senate as well as in the House, including our very own um, Vice Chair Gonzalez, who was on that. The True Initiative um, was sponsored by uh, Chairman Creighton uh, on the Senate side and Representative Parker on the House side. And the Community College Finance Commission, that was uh, sponsored by Senator Taylor on the Senate side and Representative Pacheco on the House side. All of these are moving forward. In addition, um, the Texas reskilling and upskilling through education are true. Um, that was actually moved forward. Uh, the legislation passed. It passed without the funding, but we did have uh, Commissioner Keller who actually provided $25 million of funding, uh, and so this is continuing to move forward. Uh, the Commission on Community College Finance, Senate Bill 1230, um, this was continued to move forward. Everyone needs to realize that our um, formula was developed back in 1973 and it has remained largely unchanged. Um, by the time we get into the next session, 2023, it'll be 50 years that we've been operating with that funding. Um, there have been iterations over the years, such inclusion of outcome-based funding that started in 2013, um, but the formula will be uh, reviewed in the 140 day session. So it's a study that will start um, this fall and will continue through next year. It'll be completed in November of next year and those recommendations will be sent to the legislature so that when they begin in January of 2023, they begin with this particular recommendations. Uh, we're fortunate Mr. Hunt has been appointed as the chair of the community, the Commission on Community College Finance. Other members will be announced shortly, but we're, we're pleased that Mr. Hunt has been announced as the chair of this particular um, committee. 
the HERF grants that we've received, you see all the different iterations between the CARES, both student and institutional, CARISA, uh, all the different MSIs that we received, and then the American Rescue Plan, the student institutional, as well as the MSI. In total, the college has received just north of 122 million dollars uh, of resources from the federal government. So how are we expending those? So to date, we've expended over 48 million dollars. Students have received um, just short of just over 23 million. We've captured just short of 20 million in lost revenue, and then we've utilized 4.7 in institutional. This is primarily all of the different laptops, hotspots, um, tablets that we've provided. In addition, we were able to um, waive or actually pay for utilizing HERF dollars, $3.4 million of student debt. Um, kudos to um, uh, Mr. Floydis and Vice President Shaughnessy and their teams. Uh, this particular action of waiving that debt or utilizing HERF dollars for the student debt was applauded by Secretary Cardona uh, in DC, and so kudos for that. Uh, we're projected to spend the remaining just short of $74 million. We expect to provide our students with another $53.4 million. We anticipate that we'll claim another $17 million in lost revenue and that we'll spend an additional $3.1 million in institutional funding. Um, the HERF dollars are, are significant and we want to make sure that um, that we're tracking these funds, that we're communicating with the entire district regarding the administration of these particular resources, uh, and we provide a, a detailed quarterly report uh, as well as annual reporting. Uh, so special thanks to grant management, financial aid, uh, our budget and financial services, as w including general, general accounting accounts payable, the bursar services, auxiliary services, information technology, purchasing, and our emergency management, and finally human resources. Anytime we receive federal resources, we know that an audit is pending, and so we wanna make sure that we're able to provide um, a, a detailed reporting of how we're utilizing these resources, and they are very specific requirements of how we spend them. So kudos to the entire team uh, for, for the great work that they're doing on this. So let's talk some recognitions. Let's talk about some of the great things that our institution has done during this time period. First, I think everyone needs to be recognized for the great work that each of you has done for ensuring that we continue to be available to our students, to our faculty, to our staff. Even when we were operating 92% virtually, we, we continue to improve, we continue to provide those services to students. So kudos to each of you all. But some special recognitions. So we have now been recognized by Hispanic Outlook for 16 years in a row in, in producing the largest number of Hispanic associate degree earners in the nation. So this is a tribute to every single person at the institution. That is the cover of the magazine that was issued back in March, but 16 years in a row. So kudos to each of you for the great work on that. I, I wanna congratulate Associate Vice President Carrie Moe um, for, who was recognized as a Woman of Impact recipient for 2021 by the El Paso Inc. Carrie does an amazing job. It was certainly um, wonderful to see her recognized by the community uh, and everyone sees the star that she is. And so congratulations, Ms. Mo, on, on that great achievement. Our Faculty Excellence Awards for 2021, uh, our standing, outstanding faculty achievement, uh, Assistant Professor of English, uh, Assistant Professor uh, Barakat uh, Fan Chen, Assistant Professor of Math at the Valle Verde campus, Janine Rudnick, our Professor of ESL at the Rio Grande campus, and our Minnie Stevens Piper Award winner, was Manuela A. Gomez, who's an assistant professor of philosophy at the Valle Verde campus. Congratulations to each of you, uh, well deserved. Our adjunct faculty excellence awards, um, adjunct faculty for speech, uh, Ms. Frost, uh, Dr. Martinez, an adjunct faculty for biology at the Mission campus, and, and uh, Ahmed Kakmar, um, adjunct faculty for math at the Mission del Paso campus. Congratulations to each of you all for the great job that you've done. Uh, the President's Excellence Award winners for the 2020 
2021, Dr. Amaya, who's done an exceptional job, and Dr. Pena, who has taken on so much during uh, this COVID and be leading the COVID team. So congratulations to each of you for the great work that you have done. Um, our health and CT licensure, as you can see, um, they have received a completion rate of 100% um, for our first time testers. You see the 100% licensure completion rate for, uh, for each graduate in these particular programs. And this was in the pandemic, surgical tech, medical lab technology, dental hygiene, respiratory care technology, diagnostic medical sonography and physical therapist assistant every single one of the students had a 100 percent completion rate so kudos to each and every one of our faculty members for the great work that they've done our medical assisting program um, is rated the third best in the entire state of texas and so we're incredibly proud of this achievement uh, the epcc ma site visit was completed in february and was highly rated by um, the CAA HCEP as well as the MAERB. Uh, the medical assistance program, uh, assisting program rather, and the faculty to be recognized statewide as MAT is taught at all 50 community colleges and more than 25 proprietary schools in the state. Um, so kudos to you uh, for this incredible achievement. We're certainly pleased with it. Our surgical technology program, uh, the Association of Surgical Technologists has appointed EPCC faculty member uh, Margaret Rodriguez to serve a three-year term as a member of the Board of Directors for the National Board of Surgical Technology and Surgical Assisting, which will end in 2024, and she's eligible to serve a second term, but congratulations for that wonderful achievement. And finally, I'd like to obviously recognize the largest donation that we, the college has ever received. Uh, we received a $30 million donation from Mackenzie Scott and her foundation. We were one of eight community colleges in Texas who received a gift from Ms. Mackenzie Scott. We were awarded $30 million, which is the largest amount gifted to any community college in the state of Texas. So kudos to each and every one of you. When I received the phone call in May, um, to let me know that we had received this award. I asked how they found out about us, and they indicated that it was the data based on student success. So kudos to each and every one of you uh, for your continued commitment. This has been a long journey, but it's certainly satisfying to receive a tremendous gift. The Board of Trustees is currently reviewing possibilities of how we will utilize these resources. I've recommended to them to establish a permanent scholarship program for students that are graduating from high school from our community for them to be able to come in and receive that this money would be would live in perpetuity and we would utilize the, um, what it generates annually to provide those scholarships um, but certainly a thrill for me and should be a thrill for every one of you that we were recognized uh, by Mackenzie Scott with a 30 million dollar uh, gift to the institution so what's important where, where are we headed We've, we've got to build back enrollment. This fall, enrollment is currently down 6%. We do see some bright spots. First time in college has rebounded. We see that they're up about 17% um, from last fall. And we see that um, uh, the career technical education continues to grow and has grown throughout the pandemic. But we've got to build back our, our transfer programs. We have to continue to build back and build that college going culture. And we want to make sure that we have access to, to all community members, but access with success. I know that community colleges have shifted to a success agenda. I want to make sure that we continue to have an access agenda for the community. We know that so many jobs, if we look at um, what happened with the Great Recession, we saw that there were 12 million new jobs created between 2008 to 2019 pre-pandemic. Over 99% of those jo new jobs went to individuals with degrees and certificates. So we know it's so important, so we have to continue to build back enrollment uh, amongst our, our community. So what's next? Well, uh, on the 20th of September, the next legislative special legislative session, it'll be the third leg special session called this year. Part of that agenda is to, to look at allocation of the $16 billion that the state received. 
um, and uh, from ARPA dollars. And so we have to advocate, uh, and the 50 community colleges are advocating for an additional $75 million to be um, allocated for the TRUE initiative, Texas Reskilling and Upskilling Through Education and an additional um, three, $250 million, um, for strengthening community colleges. We have a formula that looks at the loss of first time in college students, as well as unemployment insurance uh, applications, uh, in addition to enrollment. And so we will be, if, if that allocation is approved, the college would receive approximately $7 million additional dollars to be able to help us move forward and obviously, um, reaccreditation visit by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Uh, they will be here in September of next year. That is also what's next. And so I want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. Uh, and finally, uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, uh, I want to personally thank each and every one of you for the great work that you continue to do um, throughout the pandemic and as we continue to return safely as we continue to return um, to campus. Uh, I want to thank you for the great work that you do. I want to wish you a wonderful fall 21 uh, semester, and thank you so much for the great work.